It's a real pleasure. You are polymath in this space, you know, fingers in lots of pies, as it were, exploring many things, an expert of many domains. Start by sharing about the Aloha Regenerative Foundation. Why is it here? Its reason for being? What's its passion and its purpose? Aloha is not the Hawaiian greetings. I just always like to get that clear because a lot of people confuse it with the Hawaiian greeting. Aloha stands for Adaptive Lifestyle of Health and Sustainability. And it's actually a sinus menu, which is a, a, a persona of how people interact with our, our living world. And the Aloha Regenerative Foundation true mission and purpose is to empower billions of global citizens to live an adaptive lifestyle of health and sustainability within the safe operating spaces of our planetary boundaries and to do it regeneratively, meaning to keep creating the conditions that are conducive to life to thrive and flourish. Wow. So this is obviously right up my street, uh, hence why we know each other. Uh, you are involved in many initiatives from, you know, ecological economics all the way through to regenerative futures initiatives. And I want to talk a bit about regenerative futures as we get going. But first, I also acknowledge that you travel extensively. You talk to myriad different stakeholder groups. And I'd be really interested, and perhaps the audience will be as well, as sort of, you know, asking you, you know, what are you witnessing happening right now in this space, this, this space that's bubbling up? What are you seeing shifting? What are the emerging trends that you're noticing? There's a global awakening occurring, a shift in consciousness. You know, it, it, it's much more noticeable now, but I have to tell you, honestly, uh, Carl Sagan said it many, many years ago on his show Cosmos. He said there's this growing consciousness that sees the earth as a single organism and an organism divided amongst itself as doomed. And I really see that there's in this awakening of consciousness throughout the world in my travels all over the world, conference centers, United Nations, climate conferences, World Economic Forum, World Government Summit, and just private and, and other international organization events, large gatherings. People are not happy with our current systems. They're not happy with the plans and paths and directions that we're going on. And it's leading to this, what I call this awakening, that they're looking for something better. They're looking for hope and inspiration, new models, new systems, and really goes back to that uh, uh, Buck Minister Fuller saying, and you, you say this as well, and I speak about him and, and that as well. Uh, what does a world that works for everyone look like? And they're like, yeah, it's not working for me. Is, is there a model or what, what would it look like a better future? I, I love that. And of course, I would probably say, you know, what does a world look like that, that is better for all species, you know, all life? And that's the interesting challenge. And what I found, um, and we've been exploring together, is it, you know, whilst that can suddenly get complex because of the world and, and life is complex in many ways. As Oliver Wendell Holmes once said, you know, the other side of all this complexity is actually a beautiful simplicity. And the deeper we go into this awakening, I think the more we are starting to wake up to something that we have known in our hearts um, for the vast portion of our human history, actually. And that's coming through. That's quite e interesting uh, as what I call sort of tapping into the rhizome of regeneration. It's a deep sense of connection to life and consciousness. 